Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this tutorial. Um, this time we're going to create a more complex shape. Uh, we're going to create this uh, impact wrench, uh, the DeWalt one. Now, what I've already done is inputted this uh, image onto uh, a plane inside of 3ds Max. I've frozen it and turned off fro show frozen in grey. It's 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters, perfectly square image. So you have to create uh, a square plane. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with a box and we're going to build up the majority of the shape other than this uh, little chamber on the end um, that we're going to create uh, with a, a separate object so what we're going to do first is make sure that you're in the front view and that your um, image is like this we're going to create ourselves box and in the perspective view what we want to be able to see is to make sure that the settings in terms of width etc are about right now we currently have an object that's 7 in height and we're going to go with 10 and we're going to go with 10 but we need to align this uh, to the object so go in the front view we currently have shadows on which makes it a little bit hard to see um, with the object behind so what we're going to do is we're going to change high quality to standard so we don't get any of that lighting come through and what we're going to do is we press alt x on our keyboard to turn it invisible um, but we can still see the outline of it we're going to convert that to an editable poly and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to drop these down to where we start to see this slope occurring we're going to drag select these and move them over and we're going to drag select these and move them over as well. Now, in order to get this shape, we're going to have to put some work into it. So we're going to start, first of all, by selecting this part, go back into the front view, and we're going to extrude upwards. And we're going to go to this next part where we start seeing the start of the handle uh, appearing. We're going to select this one and drag it across. So we've got that slope starting to appear. If we press Alt-X, we see that now in the viewport, what we will have is this kind of shape. And we're going to carry on building from that. However, this next step to build ourselves this handle, we're going to want to create ourselves um, a little bit of an, an opening for it. So if we go into perspective view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ring a selection of edges there and press connect and press yes. Go into the front view and I'm going to move that along to make the opening here for where we have our uh, our handle. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go up once more with this but only a little distance and if we go back to the front view Alt X on our keyboard we'll be able to see if we get that in line with it and then do that with this one so that we create that rounded appearance here we're going to move that so that it goes onto the shape of the object and the same with this and one more we're going to ring this selection so that it gives us a little bit extra to play with at the front if we move that there closer and with here we can move that back a little bit as well now I'm purposely going for the, the basic shape as a box first. I'm not going to worry too much about putting any details in until later on because I want to use subdivision to be able to add in um, high resolution details. So adding extra details too quickly can be somewhat costly um, for that stage. Now it's only going to be this section that I'm going to take up but I want to make that smaller on the inside. So I'm going to go for an, uh, an inset and I'm going to make sure that that is only ever so slightly further in so we're probably going to go about about one centimeter inwards but what we're going to do is we're going to scale that inwards so we get a more uh, believable representation uh, of what that shape will be um, let's go into the front view again and we'll see that we need to drag them a little bit further towards this way so we're going to grab this so we've got these two selected here and we're going to push them all the way over to where we had the other two. However, what we want to do is we're going to delete this polygon 
and we're going to delete this polygon and we're going to move them in the front view to align with those other dots that we got there. From here what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to bridge this opening just so we've got something there for now. We will rectify that a little bit later on. We're then going to select this part, go into the front view and we're going to extrude. Okay. Now what you'll see is that we need to bring this a little bit further back on here as well which is okay but we'll press the tick same as the other side we're going to delete, delete this and we're going to bring these extruded parts back all the way in the front view until we hit where it is in the bottom as well now we're going to get rid of this one and we're going to do the same again as what we did on the opposite side we're going to select these and we're going to just bridge them for now we're going to come back to them as mentioned before into the front view again and what we're going to want to do is to keep extruding upwards from this section here now we're going to build the rest of the handle so we're going to extrude and we're going to press the plus sign and we're going to press the plus sign and one more there we will do um, so we've got about five sections really so I'm going to press OK Alt X to see through it again and we're just going to line these up with what we've got here on our image now this one here I'm going to purposely leave it this far onto the object because we're going to make the, the trigger slightly separately and we're going to follow that up there and we're going to then change what is currently going to happen with these two this one is going to come down to here and this one is going to go to there this one here is going to come down and this one is going to come down as well now to help our shape what we're going to do is we're going to add in another connect through here so go into the perspective view and we want to press connect between the two of them back into the front view then we can maneuver that back down for the shape that we have there we then are going to go to the front click these two and potentially the third actually let's do the third and we're going to extrude those we're going to press alt x again so we can see through and this time this one is going to go to the starting point of the trigger and I'm just going to draw around that with these ones now with this part here I'm going to select this edge and I'm going to ring it and press connect now we want to make sure that this is going all the way through this section of the object as well so this won't potentially able to be selected with just the one uh, ring so we're going to put that through there we're going to grab these move that all the way forward and the same with this one like so so now we have the bottom of that shape and the last thing that we're going to do there is we're going to move this slightly further forward and again now we have the starting point of those two aspects of the shape from there in the perspective view we're going to select this top point and we're going to do an extrusion again and we're going to do uh, we'll do two of those like that so we have three all together we're then going to drop these into the shape and we're going to move these back so that they hit the back of that shape as well just drag selecting those move that one slightly further back as well now I'm going to add in another one here so that we can have the rest of the shape moving backwards press the ring and I can connect through them grab that vert move it down into position and again with these do somewhat the same now if we press Alt X to make it seeable again 
we're going to see that we have the majority of that shape, but it's looking a little bit thin. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these in the middle and we're going to scale them back out just so that we have a shape that's similar to what we want to achieve for the impact wrench. Now, with this being done, we've got the trigger left, uh, that area left to do. So what I want to get from here is to extend what we currently have. Now, what we will need to, me to make sure of is that we don't just press extrude on these because we're going to have some hidden polygons and that's never good. We don't want any hidden inside of the object. So what we're going to do is select all three, press extrude, and if we change to a local normal, it will go through each of them. And we, what we want to do is drop that down here to about 0.5. This will then give us some extra uh, topology to, to work with. If we press Alt-X, we can then move these into position for that trigger. Okay, so if we take a look at the object again, we'll see that we now have a trigger area. Yes, it is very, uh, very large at the moment, so we're probably going to need to redo some of the, the shaping for this, but we've got the outline um, how we want it. So what we're going to do is grab those parts here. If we scale them in, then we get a smaller trigger area. But we're going to want to do that probably with the entire front part. But we're going to want the whole object rounded. So we're going to move these in. And we're going to go to about 60 on the y-axis coordinate that you'll see at the bottom. Now what we're going to want to do in the left view is to see where we would be able to add the extra shape on the end of here. So we'll see that this is constructed slightly differently than what the rest is. And we're going to build this from uh, what we did with the, the actual uh, splines last week. So we're going to create a new part of the object with a spline and we're going to draw ourselves an object that goes around this part of the object all the way to the front here. Now with that we can add that lathe modifier to it and we're going to edit it so that we get it in the x-axis. Click on your axis and we're going to drop that down so it gives us that nice looking shape. Now with that shape, we're going to want to move it into there. So we turn onto the lathe, move it over. And we're going to have to now think about how we get this to join up with the rest of this object. Now we don't necessarily have to have them being the same object. Instead, what we can do is build around it so that it seems as if it is. But it, despite it being made up of something totally separate, the first thing that we're going to want to do is to drop the sides down to about 8 so that we have something a little bit less uh, in terms of polys. And with it, we're going to have to try and build this onto the rest of the shape. And what we're going to do is convert this to an editable poly. And we're going to then make sure, first of all, that this front part is deleted and capped so that we don't have the topology that way and we're going to connect between the two. So that bit's sorted. Now with this bit at the back we can, we've got two options. We can either construct the rest of it from this and keep the rounded shape or we can try and fit it as two different objects. Now because this part of the uh, the impact wrench is connected to this aspect 
it would make more sense for us to use the actual shape of the impact wrench at the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the bottom part of this and we're going to delete it. So just the bottom part there. Okay. Then what we're going to do is ring select this here and we're going to make sure in the front view that it lines up with where it starts to connect on this object. As you can see this part here is where we're going to want to get it to. Now in the image the front part is slightly rotated. So if we turn the snaps for angle rotate on we see there that it's a little bit out um, of that rotation and potentially a little bit too small. So if we make that just that little bit bigger in the scale and we can turn off the angle snap and make sure it rotates into a more suitable position. There we go. So what we're going to do with that now is we're going to combine these two areas. So what we're going to do is delete these two as well. Now we have made the connect. And we're going to try and combine these shapes together. Now because this already has the shape, what I'm going to do is to select these parts here and I'm going to delete them and I'm going to do exactly the same with these front part but I'm going to keep this back just for now because what I'm going to do is press attach this object to that so now we have that front drill part as being a, a part of the, uh, the handle and everything else we're going to select these two and we're going to move them back all the way holding shift and using the move tool and we're going to run now from here a ring selection all the way through the center of it and we're going to target weld the top part to the back of this impact wrench. The next thing we're going to do is select these. In the front view we're going to move them down so that they go in somewhat of a adjacent line. So it keeps some of that shape from the front of it running into the back. Additionally we're going to grab this one, we're going to right click on the snaps and make sure that vertex snap is on, turn it on and we're going to hover over this vertex here, hold shift and we're going to snap that to there. We're going to do exactly the same on the opposite side. So we're going to hold shift and snap to there. We're then going to select on vertex, drag select and weld the two. We're going to do exactly the same again now with these bottom parts we can do them collectively. We want to hover over that corner, drag select, use a shift. There we go. And then we're going to weld these again. Finally then, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the rest of this to there. So I'm going to bridge between these two and the same on the opposite side. Then I'm going to do a target weld. Ooh, what would it? Let's not do a target weld. We're going to do another bridge. But first of all, we need to rectify this. It's gone off kilter somewhat. So, because we've got angle snaps on, if yours has not done it, we need to do that and weld it. Click the edge. Select these two and bridge and do the same on the opposite side. Once we have that, turn off your angle snap, click vertex and select these two. With them, we're going to scale them outwards so that we get that rounded shape more so here. We're then going to select this edge and that edge and bridge and do the same on the opposite side. 
Now we're going to select the inside of here and we're going to need to connect the two of these now. Now on the object we have it sort of slightly separately. The quickest way is to delete this, select these two here and we're going to want to run this down here. So in preparation I'm going to ring select these instead put a connect through the middle of them then I will be able to bridge between that one and bridge between that one and we keep those bits of topology running through the entire model. Now that we get here we're going to need to close off this and decide what we're going to do with it. So I'm going to select this, click ring, I'm going to put another connect through there. I can then use that to go along here. So what I'm going to do is add one more through this ring here so that we can connect the two sets. So what we're going to do is from there to there we're going to bridge and exactly the same on the opposite side. There to there we're going to bridge. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a line through here to connect into the rest of this. But first we're going to ring select this, do a connect, bridge between these two. We're then going to select this one, ring select, press connect, and we're going to bridge between these two. But make sure that we do that on the opposite side as well. And finally then it leaves us with the one to bridge on each side and there we have it. We've now got our impact wrench sized to the image and we can now add in some of the extra details to add onto a higher resolution option. Now we can round off the edges of the, the parts of the square at the bottom using a chamfer and we can optimize some of the positions of these edges. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of those by control and backspacing and what I want to do is to run the same amount of edges through here as we have on the rest of the object. So connect through there to join them up and I'm going to do the same for each side of this as well so that they run through the entire object. So that side, ring, connect. That side, ring, connect. And then we're going to do exactly the same with these, is to make sure that they're topologized properly. We can optimize the shape afterwards, but for what we're going to do in terms of adding detail, we're going to need everything to be running through exactly the same. Now, what we're going to do on the bottom here, and I double click that to get the loop, is I want to put in a little bit of an edge on there, on the entire bottom part of the model. I'm going to run a chamfer, and what we should see then is that because we've kept it square in shape, we can actually not affect the topology too much and we've not put any detail in there it means that we've got nice quads on our object. So I'm going to do that to about uh, one centimetre. Press yes and now we've got it rounded at the bottom. The next thing that we're going to do is try and round off the shape of the handle. So we'll grab this part this part and these parts all the way up to this part here and I want you to do exactly the same on the back what we're going to do is we're going to use the, uh, the, the scale tool to bring them in slightly so they're a bit smaller at the bottom for the handle and also 
what I want to do is to see if we can do them that way and you'll see that now we have a bit of a rounded edge being created for it instead of the uh, the square one however because we selected this I'm going to slightly undo that I'm going to alt select that and alt select that and do the same thing again so that we keep that square shape occurring in the at the back of the the wrench um, I don't want to, to overdo it now we've got a rounded holding aspect but we want to make sure that that continues into the rest of the shape so we're going to grab these two move them forward and we're going to do the same with these two grab them slightly move them forward and lastly we're going to do it with these to slightly move them further forward and it's just so that we can try and round off the shape leading into the rest of what we have and uh, the last thing that we're going to try and do is make sure that it fits every part of the shape that we have there now if we were to add in a turbo smooth for subdivision we'll see that that doesn't affect too much what we have but what I would suggest is that you create yourself a high resolution and then optimize from this thanks for watching give it a go unwrap the model get it textured